Hi everyone, what's this? Another video so soon? Yes. Um, so let's chat about a few things today. First of all, the Blender Cinema project. Recently I put a Twitter post out on Twitter. It'd be weird if I put a Twitter post anywhere else, asking people to send every short film they know about made with Blender or not like exclusively with Blender, but just incorporating Blender as a significant part of the pipeline, as I said there, to try and help flesh out the database for our Blender Cinema website project, which I was kind of hoping to get out this week, but you know, I've been working on other things and getting that database fleshed out is actually taking longer than I think. And like the more we work on it, the better it gets. Like it looks pretty good visually. Maybe I can show you some more like preview images on the screen. And it just feels like there's always something more to add. So I'm sorry for like hyping it up so much over these videos, but it keeps looking better and better. Uh, so you can see here, I've been very popular on Twitter because of this. So it's getting some attention inside of the Blender Foundation slash studio, which is a little bit nerve wracking, but also kind of cool. So I suppose this is also a call to you as well. If you have a list of Blender short films or just like popular animated videos made with Blender, I said popular, they don't have to be popular because the whole point of this project is also connecting people with Blender short film creators, even if they don't have much of an audience. So if you have any content in mind that will fit this website project, then let me know. You can either like leave comments down below, but you know, YouTube's a bit weird with links in comments. So you can message me on Twitter. You can DM me on Discord. You can message me on Instagram, although Instagram's a bit finicky as well, because a lot of messages get hidden, hidden in the message requests. You can send me emails through my website, goddesshold.online slash contact. But yeah, any of these will be fine because I'll basically just look anywhere when fleshing out the database to make sure everything's included. But a caveat about that last bit, everything being included uh, won't be the case because obviously there has to be some degree of moderation. I asked Joshua about this quickly as well. There has been like one short that's been sent to me that contains some nudity. So I have to kind of think about, okay, do we want this to be a family friendly site? Because, you know, Blender's like for all age ranges really. And to what degree, you know, some violence I imagine should be allowed, but you know, a certain degree of nudity, not so much. In the future, we can do something where we can separate the sections based on like an age range, you know, for more mature content. But for now, I'd like to keep it family friendly within reason, you know, kind of like teen level stuff. So some violence allowed. I also think there should be some degree of moderation for quality. Obviously, I want this to be as accessible as possible for everyone to encourage people of different skill levels to actually submit their content to be displayed on the site. So it's discoverable, but you know, some degree of quality moderation, because if we imagine like, you know, companies coming and having a look at the Blender Cinema website, who maybe want to incorporate Blender in their workflow and see good demonstrations of how people around the world are using it. If we have like a hundred first ever animation projects, you know, littering the front page, it's, it kind of doesn't give that quality feel to it. And that's obviously why we have like the featured section on the website as well. So basically we will have like free featured websites at any one time. And on the top of the page, when you enter the website, it will randomize the order of those features. So the large image you will see is one of those featured films. And then we have like the new arrivals and then we have different categories underneath that. So some degree of content quality moderation, because we just want things to be nice and presentable. But I feel like that also also gives people something to strive towards, you know, like if someone is new to making animated shorts in Blender, if their first animation maybe was a bit too janky to, you know, like meshes flying away from armature rigs and things intersecting and overlapping and really bad lighting and stuff just being a bit, you know, like audio peaking, voice acting and, you know, all that kind of thing. Then maybe, you know, if that doesn't make it, I suppose that can encourage people to continue developing to make something that can be allowed on the site later on. But obviously when I even say that, I feel bad about it because I've always been on the side of it doesn't matter how like measurably bad a piece of artwork is. I always err on the side of giving encouragement first and foremost and not criticizing someone's work unless it's directly asked for. So this whole like having a layer of quality moderation thing isn't necessarily compatible with how I've always thought about like giving critique and stuff, but I feel like it's kind of necessary for a site like this because it does have a purpose behind it. You know, it kind of goes into that whole seeing content for what it is rather than tech demos. And part of that is being able to take it seriously when looking at it at face value inside of the streaming service interface. So hopefully that will make sense. Family friendly within reason, quality content within reason. Like there are no like harsh boundary lines between all of these things. Okay, so about what we spoke about in the last podcast, um, productivity tip wise and this Optiflow method, as I'm calling it. I've been thinking more about, you know, planning out my day for what an optimum workday would look like. Again, I'm not completely serious about this. You know, I'm not going into hardcore. This is what everyone should do. Follow me to become a productivity guru. Buy my book, buy my podcast. Do you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? 
knowledge. Okay, we're not like that. The OptiFlow thing is kind of just me thinking about, okay, here is an optional way to work. If I'm feeling a bit lost in direction, if I feel like I'm ambitious today, what can I do to maximize my potential work-wise? So I like doing things visually, like I like drafting out maps of ideas because it kind of helps you think and then kind of follow different directions in that full process and come up with new ideas. This is kind of like how with Bijan version 10, I went into a call with Ben Cartesian Caramel and we had a look at how you would visualize a tech tree of generative structures. So if you're imagining presets, we spoke about this in the Bijan V10 in development video, that when you start looking at like logic and mesh techniques as a tech tree, it's interesting because you start thinking, okay, well, how do you take like this curve generation idea to the next level? Or how can you combine it with other ideas to create new presets and being able to see things visually like that is very helpful. I suppose it's like a form of exploration, like how you can explore the real world through a map. I think about it like you can explore new ideas also through a map, but just a different kind. But it kind of encourages that creativity process because you're trying to fill in the map as you go. So I'll just show you this. Obviously, I haven't finished this whatsoever. So just to give you a breakdown, we have like the hours throughout the day. We have in the colors here, the general phases throughout the day for when to do work. And then the yellow dots here, again, I still need to add more of these. These are places where I can add tools or parts of my workflow I can change significantly, like something I can create to speed up the process or a change that could be made. So this is interesting. When you start visualizing your entire day as different phases of different types of work, you kind of know instinctively what parts of these phases are going to be the largest drags. So for me, editing and the research and planning phases are the largest drags. They take the most amount of time. So it's like, okay, these are the phases you can focus on to develop tools or new techniques techniques to speed them up and condense them into a shorter time. These are the kind of things to focus your cognitive effort on when trying to, you know, develop new ideas for how to speed up that process. So let's run through it. I tend to wake up at about somewhere between half eight and half nine. Sometimes it changes depending on the day. Wakey wakey was the first phase of the day. Energize, breakfast and music. Always breakfast and music. I listen to music like really soon after I wake up and I kind of eat my food. I feel like this is the good time for non-time sensitive posts. So Instagram post, Instagram reel. So again, for like the last week, I've been putting an Instagram post out every morning to kind of just train my brain into that process. But this requires posting from a pool. So one thing I don't have at the moment is an actual pool to work from. So I need to create the pool for social content. So that's one thing I need to outline, like where are the pools? Where do I keep them? Am I going to store them on Google Drive, local folders, maybe some kind of automatic backup system as well. One thing to keep in mind there. So I'll post. So I've been doing the Instagram posts fine. Now I need to set up Instagram reels, but these are going to be the same as shorts, TikTok content, etc. So that's fine. I basically give myself until about 10 in the morning to get ready, like ready to work, energize, whatever. And then we'll spend a little bit of time responding to DMs and emails. I don't give myself too much time to work on that. There's usually not too much activity or when there is activity, it's usually quite non-essential, non-important. So a little note about that. Sometimes I get help requests, you know, through the emails, through the contact form. And those are the only types of emails I try to respond to immediately. Again, within reason, sometimes I need to gather more information. Sometimes if it's something that requires investigation and I get the help request right at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, let's leave it until tomorrow before responding. So basically I just try and do the DM and email clear out right here before I start working just to kind of keep it fresh. I suppose this is like the equivalent of like making your bed in the morning. You know, it's like that one thing you can do at the beginning of the day to actually feel like you've done something to tend to the garden, tidy things up and then just feel ready to be on your way. So I found that my most productive hours of the day are the first few hours. So between here, like these are the most effective work hours I've noticed. The rest of the day seems to go by really quickly by comparison, you know, but I feel like by having some kind of map like this we can, that I can keep referring back to and keep checking the time, it might stop me from falling into like this flow of watching YouTube videos, which is where a lot of the time tends to compress into. So during these first hours, I figure it's the best time to record videos. So recording a second channel short, theoretically, if that starts becoming a part of the kind of content workflow, record a main channel short. The reason why I'm doing it in this order is because I'm doing it in terms of importance. So the most important videos come later. The reason for that is because of recording warm up. Maybe these two will be interchangeable. 
So for example, my voice will start to fade after a while. So maybe I'll do the second channel short, main channel short, then the main channel, then the second channel video. It depends. But one thing I've noticed is that by the end of a video recording, you're already warmed up, you're much more prepared, you're more expressive, and you're ready to actually start saying things properly. Right at the beginning of videos, you tend to be a bit more stuck up. Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. But like your voice isn't really ready for it. Back when I used to script the videos, one thing I would do is I would have my entire script, blah, 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 read it top to bottom, and then I would do the first part of the video again, right? Because what happened is when I finished doing the first recording, I noticed that if I started the video again, this would be better than this. So I would then substitute it. So we would take the second start of the video and then combine it with the first end of the video. And that would be the final recording. That was just a little secret about the process. So that's why I think theoretically, if we did it this way, this would be the order. And the funny thing is, if you're wondering what time it is now that I'm recording this, it's actually 11.39. So I've taken a little bit of time. I'm right here at the moment in this recording phase, but it, there'll be a bit further left, I think. But so yes, I am complying to that now. Unfortunately, I don't have any videos to release next, which is the next section. So theoretically in a day around here, we will have videos prepared for release on the next day, which I didn't do yesterday. So assuming that videos are ready to release, that would happen here between 12 and half 12. And the reason for that is because according to my YouTube analytics, this is a time when people start coming online. This isn't necessarily the optimum release time. For me, the optimum release time is a bracket that's generally around here, I would say. Anytime between 12 and 3. I think a lot of YouTubers would go a bit later, but when you have a look at like the audience online time, it tends to kind of go something like this if I draw it and it starts going like that, like a wave. So what I do is I tend to put my videos out here just as the wave starts increasing. So when people come online, the video is already in their sub feed. But other YouTubers, you know, they'll find like the peak and then they'll put it here so they can get the maximum number of viewers immediately. But then, you know, you kind of notice that the viewership tends to drop off then. So I do it this way, where I do it kind of at the beginning so we can actually ride that wave. Not that it necessarily helps because there's always going to be another wave afterwards, you know, the next day. YouTube says that the time you release videos doesn't really make much of a difference. I call BS on that within reason. Again, it seems like pre-existing subscribers interest is an important thing so you would ideally want as many of those subs clicking watching immediately as soon as the notification goes out i just found that for me going on the upward curve seems to be just like a comfortable place to do it and then after the necessary videos have been released it's time for lunch so why lunch well obviously because it's midday but also when you release videos you're very much inclined to stop and obsess and keep refreshing the page and watching that kind of average graph go up because when you release a video you can watch how it's performing live in comparison to your average performance which is a very nerve-wracking statistic because sometimes you notice that the video is doing worse than your average and you know it's I think this is the cause of so many mental health problems with different YouTubers. So lunch is the time to eat, watch YouTube videos or anything else and just try and forget about it for a while and then once we're done with lunch we can come back to working. So here I've put the editing phase. Editing takes quite a while and I want to monopolize on that kind of early-ish work boost. Obviously it's going to be a bit slower now that I've eaten lunch. This is the time to try and edit as many as the recorded videos as possible or any other videos to record that are sitting in the pool. Two hours is not a long time for editing. You know, editing a single main channel video for me can sometimes take me like you know, that many hours, sometimes more. So this is where we need to think about preparation for what types of videos to record, as well as tools to help speed up the editing process. So let's take a look down here. Yellow dot representing a place where a tool can be made or some kind of workflow improvement technique can be implemented. Auto trimming for Premiere, something I've always wanted. And I think someone has made a tool for it, but you know, it's like monthly paid or something, which sod that. Auto trimming for Premiere, the ideal thing for this would be where I can take my video content and separately link my processed audio content. So I'll sync that up manually and do that and I just want a tool that removes the gaps in between the speaking moments after you know I've created this, this linked content. There are tools which already do this for like regular videos I think but I need to look into that but the problem with having a separate tool is that I would need to re-export the video with the processed audio then pass it through the tool then re-import that back into Premiere and that's just like a whole extra process which probably won't be worth it in the long time or long term rather. That's the thing with like a lot of these workflow improvement tools is that yes they probably save time in certain areas but the actual activity required to implement it into the workflow is extra 
extra cognitive effort because jumping between different types of work already requires I think a certain skill of being able to translate your mental space into different types of work especially if it's like between creative and technical work that's already a large requirement on a human I feel like adding extra workflow tools that require even more jumping around different types of mindsets is possibly not worth it even if it does save a lot of time on specific projects so an auto trimming tool for Premiere acts inside of the program and doesn't require some kind of fee. That'd be great. I've also started incorporating the media browsing in Premiere more by doing things like pre-creating like emoji image sheets so I don't have to make them every time I make a video, working on new um, like social images so I don't have to create updated ones every time for things like when I'm showing the channel page and stuff like that. Um, so little things like this just to speed up individual parts of the process. Also I noticed in terms of editing, because there are several ways I edit videos, right? So there's this way, which is where I'm recording the audio separately. I will process it. This video is being recorded through the main camera. So the quality is really good, right? But this is not the only way it can be done. A perfectly viable alternative way is to use the camera as a webcam, feed it through OBS, then use the OBS audio. This is what I noticed The doing this for shorts is a good idea because the quality is still good. Like it's good enough. It's not as good as this, but it's good enough. And this type of quality takes extra time to make because it, you know, we have to process the audio separately. We have to combine the files afterwards and all of that jazz. So we'll do lower quality for these and higher quality for these and possibly work can be done on the lower quality section to make it higher quality. There are probably some settings and other kind of live processing effects related to that, but just keeping that in mind is also something that can help speed up that phase. So that's just kind of what I'm explaining here. Now keeping both of these things in mind, like having this new kind of social image street structure and the adding the capability for making shorts, making you know that the new visual social structure should have a 16 by 9 and 9 by 16 variation, so both can be used during the editing phase because obviously for short type videos um, it's a vertical aspect ratio so when we're making like these reminders or things to appear on the screen make it so that you have widescreen and vertical versions of those reminders so you don't have to like keep making variations of them every time you make a different type of video okay that's great so product work can be anything so right now would be like me working on the blender cinema project or any one of the add-ons i'd like a way to quick open all necessary programs folders and content web pages so that's another thing about jumping between different types of product projects you need to remind yourself of the structure of the project. So I think I spoke about this in the old creativity over efficiency video, going back to how like when I'm coding, I don't make things as efficient as possible. I leave them open, very plain English, lots of comments. Maybe I'm repeating different conditions where I don't need to be. The reason is because when you come back to that project, if you're cycling between many different types of projects, you want it to be as easy as possible to read and to re-enter because you're basically reteaching yourself what you were doing the last time you worked on that project. This is what separates us from like those hyper efficient like programmery people that are like there is one perfect way to do something. Bullshit. We are multi-potential like creators. Our skill is jumping between different types of projects at a rapid speed and making rapid progress. The way we do this is by leaning into that capability of being able to jump between different projects. So I would like to have like quick batch files or whatever that can open the project file and all of the explorer folders and the web page, which takes me directly to where I can change the files. Because I honestly believe that cutting out just those few seconds, moments, minutes of work or finding the right place in the folder and finding the right place on Gumroad or Blender Market to change the files will make all the difference for jumping into an artistic project and updating it. For example, if I was updating my procedural patterns pack, I want to be able to press a button and have the procedural patterns blend file. And maybe on my lower monitor here, I want to have the folder space for procedural patterns and the web page where I can change the files. So it's all exactly there immediately. Now, I don't know how to do this. I think you can on Windows. We'll see. So that's something I need to look into, a program I can quickly write that will do that, but for like every project. And we've spoken about that as well before, like tiny hiccups in the process of a project can stop you from making an insurmountable amount of progress. So for example, I once said about how with my old camera, the act of actually plugging the camera in and starting to recording was one of these tiny parts in the process that prevented me from making videos. I think you'll find if you're trying to optimize your process that removing some of those seemingly small parts of the workflow can make a huge impact. Anyway, another note down here, links to pools should be accessible from our main Notion video 
your projects workspace since that is open in front of us all day. That's true. So I have like one major page on my Notion where I can see a calendar of everything I want to release as well as a video tracker. So all the things I've recorded, what phase they're in, are they concepting, prepared, recorded, uploaded, waiting to publish, etc. And my series building page where I can add notes for videos. So every time I find something cool in the Blender community I want to share, add it to the community list to add to a future community roundup. I have a list for business ideas, podcast discussions, shorts, newsletter, Patreon things, project updates, Blender tips, etc. So this is basically where I build up videos. So since this is open to me every day, this should be where I have links to the different content pools so I can quickly access everything I need to like release or stuff that I can kind of add back to the pools at a later time. So the artwork phase, I haven't thought too much about this one, but again, it should be kind of pretty self-explanatory, just a place to quickly make artwork and add to the pool so it can be released at a later time again, possibly the beginning of the day. Dinner, pretty self-explanatory phase. Admin and metadata work. So this would be after videos have been edited and like exported. This is where thumbnails are created and things like the description, tags, maybe even just uploading them to the channel, waiting for the processing to happen, all of that stuff. Once that's completed, we log as ready to release. This can take a surprising amount of time as well. We don't necessarily need to wait for the processing but we do need to wait for the uploading so there's probably like other methods or tools in here that can be worked on to speed up that process so here we know that at the end of this we have something to release on the next day which is where we come back to this release videos section so we're kind of feeding back into that pool then shower because i tend to shower around this time and then the last phase is finally preparing for the next day we're winding down in the day we're not actually doing proper work we're just researching thinking what are we going to record tomorrow again when we come back around here in the morning this is this. Now this includes things which might take a while to do, including research for the community roundup videos, also preparing ideas for the podcast, preparing what I can record for the shorts. You know, there's probably a lot of improvement that can be done here and many ways to speed up the researching process, including a tool which I did start working on in the past, which I haven't finished. Perhaps it's time for that project. So all of this has been crossing my mind for the last few years in some degree or other. I don't have the money to hire someone to help me do a lot of this stuff. And like I said, I'm interested in becoming the powerhouse content creator, again, all within reason. So the ideas always cross my mind and I've been planning for a while. Can I build programs that are my workers? Obviously, there's a lot of discussion going on about AI stuff, but I've been a little bit obsessed with this idea of building employees essentially, programs that aren't people that do the job of people. The most realistic place for this is not editing, even though I wish it was, because uh, Pe Premiere doesn't have a good API. Of course, I could use DaVinci Resolve. I hate the interface on there. A lot of quirks about the software I don't like. I wish Premiere had a more applicable API so I can develop better tools for it. Admin and metadata work. Maybe some of this could be done. I'm not too sure. I need to look into it. But research and planning. This is the place where tools are most likely to be worked on. I was building a tool that will take data from YouTube, not using the YouTube API. That's a whole fuss. I don't really care about it. We also don't want to do web scraping because that's not necessarily legal and it's a bit, you know, tenuous. But YouTube generates XML files for channel pages, which display like the most recent 10 videos or something, and also the main pieces of data like view count, like count, and things like that. I was preparing a project that would look at every Blender creator's YouTube page and probably also Twitter pages, Instagrams, whatever, and just take a quick snapshot every day, just one. It would just read the XML data and consider all the important parts, you know, like the view counts, engagements, titles, whatever, and just store them, just add them to a database. And then separately, a worker program will assess the database every day and basically keep a look at the performance of everyone's content. Now, the reason behind this is so it can identify not only what's become popular, but also, and this is much more interesting to me, what content has fallen under the radar. So you know how we spend so long complaining about the YouTube algorithm because some of our videos don't perform well and we hate that. I was planning, and probably I'll still do this, why not? I'm building a project that would keep an eye on the performance of every Blender YouTuber's channel and then highlight videos that were not picked up by the algorithm so I can share them in future videos. Now, of course, that's stuff that could be done by like someone that's been hired to do research, but it'd be much easier just to automate that process. So we'll have our own database, our own program coroutine that's just like constantly considering what content's being made in our community ecosystem and then highlighting things that deserve attention with the final end goal that this work 
Marker program can provide me with a plan for what to make so that going into the next day, we have something to record. Now, again, this isn't necessarily realistic to think about the main channel content being an everyday thing. But once again, just considering this whole thing as a mental exercise, when you apply your mind to look at the pitfalls in certain parts of your process, it kind of gives you better ideas for making tools or where to invest the time and effort to create new tools and techniques that can help your workflow in the long run. This wasn't the only idea for a worker program. I had lots of ideas. Let me actually kind of take a look at my notion because this is where I keep them. So I'll tell you the name. It's called the Companion or the Sentinel Project, which is a very fancy name. Sentinel was like the name of an old bot I had during, you know, like my old alternate reality game project. It's also the name of a character in a like a fictional story I've written. And it was the name of our old Discord bot to kind of like test and help manage moderation stuff really early on. But that didn't really go anywhere. So there are two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different ideas. That's nine for different worker co-routines. So a few that I've just described, um, code name Intercept. So this is where, <laughs> who doesn't love cool project names? Intercept is what I just described. Basically creatively keeping an eye out for content, not necessarily again, web scraping, but listening to all of the possible feeds, RSS, XML feeds of everyone within our database, including keeping track of development nodes for different software projects. So not just Blender, but other ones as well, keeping note of any that are popular or are becoming like super unpopular, for example. So we basically just have an ear to the entire CD community. So a program that's doing that, then codename interpret being a separate worker, which its entire purpose is to look and assess the database that's been created by the intercept worker. So intercept and interpret work together to basically create the interesting points of reference for our work. Then we have the signal worker that informs about the content for a variety of locations, notifications, email, notion, etc. So signal is basically going to be the PA to me, my personal assistant. Intercept is watching the community, interpret is figuring out what's happening, and Signal is telling me about anything that's important. So Signal will email me, it will send me text messages, it will message me through Discord, it will basically act like a PA informing me about the important things. Then a separate worker is called Consider. Consider is basically where ChatGPT is coming into the mix, right? So maybe there can be some combination there. Consider will generate ideas for us based on research and guidance. It will give us prompts for things to talk about in discussion videos based on what we've already spoken about, and then check our different mood boards select ideas based on formulas, etc. So basically consider is just the idea generation one. And maybe consider can send us ideas through Signal to help us with this part of the process here. So we don't necessarily have to prepare everything ourselves. We can have these worker bots injecting ideas for us to move on to the next day. The next worker bot is Trim. Again, not necessarily viable right now, but Trim comes in here helping to do the editing process. The next worker bot is Prepare. What Prepare does is it basically helps us with these small sections that I described, you know, about removing those small parts of the workflow from your cognitive effort. So you don't really need to think about it, but it's more than that. It's also about like preparing stuff for editing. So prepare will prepare project files and possibly package slash send them to people to complete their work tasks. It will move every recording file from our main recording folder to the workspace it's supposed to be in. So we don't necessarily need to move files manually. It will duplicate the video template from our core business workspace and basically rename it. So that video template is ready to get work working on. And I'll also possibly consider setting up prepare to upload content to our drive or shared cloud workspace so other people can access if I ever got other people on board. So prepare's job is basically moving files around for me. So the last three worker bots are a bit more esoteric, stranger, not necessarily as defined in the purpose, but possibly still useful for the future. Listen is probably something that can be combined into intercept, discover comments, discussing topics and accumulate research. Again, that's something that ChatGPT already seems to be doing. So I'll probably combine that with the um, intercept worker. Talk is a natural language interface for the system. So being able to talk to each of the workers, how can they respond back in an English way to give feedback on what's going on? Like what are they currently working on at the moment? Is there anything that's currently slowing them down? So talk will be like this middleman system between the different worker bots. And then the last one, Remember. So Remember is an interesting one because it's a system for logging data and remembering what has happened, what we've all done, with the possibility of using that data to train AI systems in later years. So basically keeping a record of everything, everything I've done, everything every worker bot has done, building up a massive data set so some kind of AI in the future can read that data set and then figure out how to help 
help us pretty much. So yeah, I haven't built those yet, but I just think it's an interesting idea that some of these yellow zone areas can be worker bots that I can work on. And again, specifically intercept and interpret are ones that will definitely give me a massive boon to this specific section here. And then the last phase of the day here is winding down where we basically, I don't know, watch YouTube, learn new things, play games. It's what I really do around this time anyway. Sometimes I guess this part can move a bit earlier on, just depends how I feel. So yeah, that's the current mindset behind this Optiflow system. A surprising amount of information packed in here. Hopefully that's given you some insight into the way that I work or the way I think about working. Possibly it's given you some insight into maybe improving your own workflows. So yeah, if you made it this far through the video, put a time related emoji, perhaps a clock or a watch or something like that. So I can see if you did make it this far. So yeah, feel free to share this video with anyone. Send up to the patron, buy stuff on the web store, curtisholt.online slash store. My patron is patreon.com slash curtisholt. All very easy to remember. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, become my best friend, develop a deeper parasocial relationship with me, and then feel disappointed when it's not reciprocated. Do all of the usual things. So yeah, have a great day, everyone. Stay safe, and I will see you next time.